Hello and welcome to What Could Go Wrong, a guide to troubleshooting electronic circuits. So let's go ahead and get started with assessing our series circuit here. It's going to help us out a lot if we label our terminals A and B. And we also want to understand the pathway of our polarity. Now we're not talking about electron flow theory here, we're simply talking about our polarity and how it lines up. This can also be beneficial for you if you put the actual components in line with your drawing. Now we want to make sure that we understand which buses are connected to what on our bus board here. Now we went through our lecture here, so there shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, but if you need a refresher, please go ahead and have that as a guide during your lab. Now, as we can see here, I'm going to start placing my components in our board here, starting with my positive polarity into my first, second and third resistor. And then finally my fourth, component which is a red LED. Now what we want to make sure we're doing is creating potential difference from each terminal that was labeled B to A. So as we remember from the beginning of this video we were labeling all of our components A and B. We want to ensure that from B to our next component of A we have a potential difference. This then forces that our current has to flow through these components. Otherwise current will always flow to the path of least resistance. And that's what these little circles are. They're just showing the potential difference between each component. And of course, in order for the circuit to work, we need to go full circle. So from our positive polarity to our negative polarity. And here we see that it's working. Now we're just showing the path here <clears throat> of connection. I shouldn't say current flow because this is an electron flow theory. But this is simply the path of our connection point in ensuring that our potential difference is made here. So let's look at a couple things here. I'm going to turn the power on and of course it seems like we don't have any power to our load. The first thing I want to check is the polarity. Now our resistors don't have polarity sensitivity but our LED does. So here I'll turn on the LED a little bit brighter so we can see and it was just a wrong polarity. Now another common mistake that happens a lot, and we want to make sure we don't have this issue, is whether or not we have correct potential difference. Now it's hard to see, so we're going to zoom in here. And as we can see here, we actually have a break. So terminals B to A is not actually connected to each other, and this essentially breaks our circuit, not allowing for flow to happen. So we're going to go ahead and fix this problem and ensure that we have proper potential difference. And now we have light. Now let's go ahead and practice by measuring our voltage with Kirchhoff's law. Now we remember from our first lecture here that Kirchhoff's law is equal to E total is equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3 and so on and so forth. We also need to ensure that how we measure for voltage. So we're going to have our multimeter on volts DC. And we'll start with measuring our total voltage. And as you can see here, we're measuring in parallel. We're simply tapping onto our components on either end of our terminals. And we're going to record each measurement we have from each component A, B, C, and D. And when we measure these, we want to record these. And as Kirchhoff's Law states, whatever goes out must come back. So whatever our total voltage is should line up pretty accurately to what I'm measuring in all these subcomponents. We have a slight error of 0.2 volts, but this is why we do it. Now let's look at how we're measuring for current here. This is a common mistake, so I'm going to show you an easy trick that I like to use. When I break a circuit in order to measure for current, I want my current to flow through my multimeter. So what I'm going to do is take one leg off of the component that I'm measuring for, and I'm going to replace that leg with a jumper wire like so. Now I have a break in the circuit and I'm forcing for current to go through my meter. I've now checked for my current and I can put the circuit back in, record my measurement. I hope this was helpful. Please make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in class.